it, I don't know, I can't believe I'm saying this. Hey guys, so since my England trip wasn't, you know, too far behind me, I figured, you know what, why not we check out one of the brands that we picked up from there? And I know a lot of you have been mentioning this brand to me as well. You're, you're really excited to see or actually hear my thoughts about it. So you know what? Let's just get a move on with this. So the brand that I am talking about is Gibson or Gibsons. I keep saying it wrong. I don't know why, but that's not surprising. But anyways, this one is called Lighthouse Island. The artist is Dominic Davison. It's 500 pieces. And it's 48 centimeters by 34 centimeters when it's completed. And I'm pretty sure most of you already know what, what I'm probably going to say about this image. You, you absolutely know what this is, right? You know that's my house and my lighthouse. Look at this ocean. You know that's me sailing away on my boat. Look, there's my husband waving at me. But I'm pretty sure once he gets back to the house, he's going to be kind of mad at me because look, I left all the lights on again. But aside from the fact that I'm going to get told off later, I mean, the, again, this image, this scenery, I can't stop staring at this. I just, I love the colors. It's, it's too much. But you know what, guys? We're not only going to be doing a 500 count puzzle today. I also want to check out what their quality is like for their 1000 count puzzle. And this one is called B Hall. The artist is Richard McNeil. And it's 68 centimeters by 49 centimeters when it's completed. And in case you're wondering whose house this is, just so you know, this is my, my other vacation home. But sometimes I come here on the weekends, you know, to check on my bees and, and whatnot, you know, it's in my garden. But anyways, there's definitely quite a lot going on here because, you know, you have all the flowers and the, the bees and the insects and whatnot. But again, another absolutely beautiful image. But what I am really curious about, of course, you know, as most of you already know, this is a new to me brand and Gibson is, you know, it's been around for quite a while. This is, they're from 1919. So, so this is a very well established English brand. So I was really happy to find these in England and, you know, bring, you know, be able to bring them back home with me. But I'm super curious, you know, what the experience is going to be like with both of these count sets. Are they going to be any different? Because as I've mentioned before, there's a lot of brands out there that, you know, the quality can vary between the piece counts. And not only that, the experience as well. So, you know, I'm curious what we got here. Are they going to be the same? Are they going to be different? I don't know, but we're never going to know, of course, until I stop rambling and finally get into these boxes. So you know what, guys? I'm going to shut up now. Let's get into these. All right, so let's open these both up. But I'm going to be careful not to, you know, mix these pieces up because I want to compare these real quick. So we got some tape on the side here, so let's get this open. All right, so here's our 500-count puzzle cover. We got ourselves... Got ourselves a little reference image here. This is actually a really nice print. I like how sharp it is. And let's see, is it about the same size as this? So as you can see where the picture starts there and where it ends. So I would say it's probably about a, just a slight bigger than the box image. I mean, I guess it's better than nothing, right? At least I don't have to use the box when I'm puzzling for the image. But you know what? Let's just, let's open this up real quick and let's see what we got here. All right. Wow. These are, these are really nice pieces. All right. It looks pretty good, actually. We got a little bit of a glossy finish, finish to it here, as you can see. So just be aware of that whilst puzzling and working on your lighting. But in terms of like the colors and the sharpness, the, the colors look pretty good. It looks true to the image. This is a nice sharp image too, actually. Look at those outlines. That's the window blinds. And that looks, I mean, that's very clear to see there. The tabs feel pretty good in terms of strength and holding up. This one is a little, a little weaker. And I guess it depends how thin it is or how long it sticks out. But um, yeah, not bad. Let's go check out the 1000 piece real quick. 
All right, here's our 1,000 count puzzle. Let's see this reference image real quick. All right, not a bad size, I, I guess. Let's see, it's about just slightly bigger than, let me, hold on, let me fix my camera here. All right, hopefully you can see that a little better now. But as you can see, the image is slightly bigger than what's on the box, but only slightly. It's not a huge reference image. And the 1,000 count puzzle reference image is actually bigger than the 500 count. So that's interesting to know. So let's open this bag up and let's see what these pieces are like and if there's really any difference between the two. All right, let's see what these are like. Oh wow, these are nice too, to be honest. We got ourselves quite a nice print as well. The colors are look very true to the box image as well. I mean, yeah, that looks pretty good. Overall, we got ourselves a good piece size. Um, the strength feels pretty good as well. To be honest, I kind of feel like this feels a little stronger than the 500 count. And I don't know why. Let's see, this is the 500, this is the 1000. In terms of thickness, they both pretty much look exactly the same. But, um, I don't know. Maybe they are the same strength and thickness. But we'll, we'll find out later when I go grab those calipers. But what I am, as I always say, oh, look what I did here. That was, that was silly of me. I got a little beastly with that piece when I pulled it apart. But anyways, I'm curious more about how these pieces are going to fit together, how they're going to hold, what the overall experience is going to be like. I mean, now the, the more that I put my fingers through these puzzles, I'm getting like that weird... I get this with some puzzles. You kind of get like this waxy feel to your fingers after touching them for a while. I don't know what that is. But anyways, that's okay. Um, I'm going to start with the 500 count first, and then we'll move on to the 500 count puzzle. And we'll, you know, do a comparison. See if there's anything similar or different about them. And who knows, maybe they'll just be exactly the same thing. But you know what? We're never going to know until I stop rambling. So you know what, guys? Let's, let's get on with this. All right, so this was a super quick sort. I didn't go too crazy with this. So here's what I did. Of course, first tray, we have the edges. Next tray here is anything with trees and, and plants and, and whatnot, kind of back there. This next tray is any of the stone on the bottom here. This tray has pieces for the house and the stairs leading to the water. Next tray is for the lighthouse, and I threw in boat pieces in there as well. And then these two trays here, these are both for the sky. But one is for the, you know, the sunset area. Oh, I didn't realize. I have two. Oh, interesting. Anyways, um, yes, so that's the sunset orangey area, and then we have like the blue sky up here as well. And then last tray is anything that I thought was for the water. So yeah. That's, that's that. I didn't go too crazy. It's not perfect, of course, but that doesn't matter right now. We can sort it out later on as we're piecing it together. So now that that's done, let's finally move on with the real fun stuff. All right, guys, let's go. After getting the edges done, I moved on to the tray with the least amount of pieces, which had the lighthouse and some of the boats. That was done fairly quickly. And then I surprisingly moved on to the sunset, which isn't like me. I usually leave that for last. I mean, I, I don't know, maybe it was because there wasn't many pieces in that one either. And already by this point, I had a pretty good idea about what this brand was all about. Overall, I felt the piece quality was great and the fit was good. And as for the hold, well, it wasn't a perfect hold, you know, like a, a, a Mandy certified kind of hold. It was a bit loose at times, depending on the sections, but I would still give it a pass because it wasn't a crumbly experience overall. But anyways, I did the sunset surprisingly quick, then moved on to the water. Again, another area that I would usually leave for later. And I kept going and going and my puzzling juices were just rushing through me. There was no stopping me. And I remember this day was a very busy one. I know I'd been out since very early in the morning and I was spent. I got back home and desperately wanted to just sit back and relax and I let my puzzle take me away. This image was captivating. I forgot about everything else. I was in that image. I was free. Hmm. <laughs> 
Don't you just love when your puzzles do that to you? It's the best. But anyways, this puzzle took me about two hours to complete. I must say that's pretty darn fast for me and I think this may only be the second time I've ever finished a puzzle in one sitting. But I sure as heck knew that wasn't going to be the case with my next Gibsons. I did already have a plan for the sorting before I started, but honestly that turned out to be a little bit more challenging than expected. Alright, kept it super simple, so here's what we got. Of course, first tray are the edges. This tray is all the like the white pieces, so we have like the sky and some of the light background there. This tray was a little tricky. I put greens in here, but mostly the lighter green, so I'm guessing it's probably like some of the grass and some of the lighter leaves within the flowers and whatnot. This tray here, we have all the pieces for the beehive. It's a big tray, I'm hoping I did that correctly. Next tray here is the pieces for the house and some of the fencing and probably the little path here as well. For the next tray, I pulled any pieces that had any of the insects and some of the birds. At least I'm hoping that's what I did there. This tray, of course, is humongous. There's so many pieces, so this is gonna definitely need resorting. But this is all flowers. And then for the last tray here, these are mainly just like the darker greens from the image. So of course, more leaves. As I said, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be quite a bit of resorting throughout this whole process, but we shall see. I'm not really sure how this is gonna go, but anyways, we're never gonna know until I shut up. So let's continue. So yeah, these trays were pretty darn full compared to the 500 count, um, obviously because it's double the pieces, what am I talking about? But anyways, because of that, I wasn't too sure what tray I was going to work on after I attacked the edges and the house, so I felt like I would be able to resort the beehive tray the quickest out of the rest because it had a number of areas that had very distinct details that could easily be separated. And I'm talking about the details within the beehive hive like the logs the straw the combs and quite honestly I don't know what else is in that beehive or if those are even logs or straw I don't I don't know but that's a tip for you if you're thinking about doing a resort pinpoint and make mental note of small sections within that area whether it's certain textures details colors to help you break up that big pile of pieces to smaller more manageable piles and I hope that made sense. But anyways, just a note to anyone who's watching, if you ever have any questions regarding my strategies, you know, you want me to clarify something, or you just wanna pick my brain on how I would go about completing something that you might be struggling with, don't hesitate to leave me a question down in the comment sections. I do my best to get through every comment in a timely manner, you know, as long as YouTube is working properly and notifies me, but please feel free to ask. And we have a great community here. Others will most likely jump in to help as well. So once I got most of the beehive put together, I figured I should just jump into the flowers tray. And that one was a little harder to resort. All right, so we got pretty much the main areas done here. We got the beehive and we have the house. Now we're just on to the flowers and basically, basically, all the hard stuff. So what I've done is I've taken the tray with all the flower pieces and started separating them by colors just to kind of keep it a little bit more organized and hopefully make it a little easier to work with. So I did like the pinks, I had the purples set up on the side and now I'm trying to work on the yellows and I'm hoping that's going to help me, you know, kind of get through this in a timely manner. I am, I am enjoying it, but I'm starting to go a little bit on the crazy side because to be perfectly honest I'm not the greatest when it comes to flowers and trees and plants and all that kind of stuff so you know I'm, I'm doing what I can here but as I said I am having fun and that's what matters so you know what let's move on with this yeah that flowers tray was a pain in the you know what and that was mainly because some pieces had two different colored flowers. So it's like, which pile do you put them in? The purple one or the yellow one? Well, usually I would just put those in its own pile and then I'll, I've, then I figure it out later. 
but I mostly pieced these on my larger trays because I was getting tired of working around what I already had on the table, which at times was a mess, but, but that's okay, it happens a lot. And doing this on the separate trays really put that Gibson's hole to the test. I did manage to successfully get those flowers moved to the rest of the puzzle, which was great. But again, like the 500 count, it wasn't exactly a very strong hold. I couldn't let the beast within me get too excited, you know? I, I had to be very careful because some pieces would fall off during the move. Even just picking them up could result in casualties. But still, I was able to move them over and that was enough to make me happy. Whilst working on the flowers, I also started piecing the insects and the one bird and filling in the gaps along the way. And as I got towards the plainer pieces like the greens and the sky, you know, I, I had to change my resorting to shape instead of colors. And that's when I know I'm getting towards the end. All right, I'm down to the last few pieces. This puzzle image was definitely a lot harder than I expected. But you know what? That's okay. As I said, I'm nearly done. I've just started resorting by shape because that's just my go-to now when I'm stuck and more towards the end of a puzzle. So you know what? I'm not gonna stand up again until this is done. So let's let's finish it. This puzzle took me about seven hours to complete. It certainly was way more challenging than the 500 count. And I was happy to finally pop that last piece in so that I can finally take a walk over to check on my bees. But anyways, with two Gibsons under my belt now, I sat back and had a good think about these latest adventures. Alright, so now that these are both done, let's quickly talk about it. Now, in terms of quality and overall puzzling experience, I can say that these two puzzles were exactly the same. Which is interesting because as I've said before, sometimes with different brands, you can get a different experience depending on the piece counts. And I think this is the first time that I felt like the two counts that I worked on with, from a brand felt exactly the same. The pieces were the same size, you get the same great variety of piece shapes, they had the same thickness, it was a really good print. I personally didn't feel like I had very big issues with gloss, but then again, that could just be dependent on my lighting. And the fit is really good. Really, the only thing I had any kind of issue with was the overall hold. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't fantastic either. I was able to hold sections of different sizes, but you know, I had to be careful because really it was barely holding on at times. And I did notice this a lot during the pickup test and my, you know, my silly storage test. It was a little challenging trying to get a grip, I guess you can say, on the, on the edge of the puzzle so that you can lift it up. It, it kept coming apart in my hands. But once I finally did get that grip, they, they both passed in the end. But when it came to my, you know, my silly storage test, that's when I kind of, you know, noticed it even more, which is not surprising really. For the 500 count, I did manage to get it broken up into sections, of course with, you know, a number of casualties, but it was nothing that I couldn't do a quick fix on. But when it came to the 1000 count puzzle, I don't know what the deal was with that one. It was an absolute mess. I was, I was pretty sad about it, but that's okay. What was more important to me in the end was that the overall piecing together, you know, the puzzling experience wasn't a crumbly one. That's just, that's just such a huge pet peeve of mine. I, I hate crumbly puzzles. But anyways, overall, I kind of feel like the experience I had with both of these puzzles, it, I don't know, I can't believe I'm saying this, but it almost reminded me a lot of Schmidt in a lot of ways. The feel and the look and the, the, the overall sensation I got from working with these pieces gave me those Schmidt vibes. Honestly, if the hold was my kind of hold, I can probably say that these were almost perfect. But yeah, I mean, England, you got some good stuff over there. And I'm really happy that I was able to bring these back home with me. But now that I think about it, when I was shopping in England, I do remember seeing fancier looking Gibson puzzle boxes. And now I'm wondering if those are any different to the ones I've worked on. 
So please, for those of you who are, you know, well-versed in the world of Gibsons, let me know if you have tried those fancier looking puzzle boxes from Gibsons. And please let me know, are they any different compared to these particular ones? Does the quality and experience range depending on the collections? I'm super curious to know about this. I, I'm almost wishing that I picked one of those up, but I sure as heck wouldn't, wouldn't have had space for it anyways. And also feel free to let me know down below your overall thoughts on the brand and you know whether you agree if you kind of feel like they are almost perfect or not. But anyways guys, I got to get a move on with my next few puzzles and I am planning on working on three for one of the next videos. So that's gonna be a lot of fun and editing, but you know what, that's okay. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I hope all is well and I will see you in the next one.